Good afternoon, everyone. Hello for this uh, last session of the day. I know I'm the last man standing between you and the drinks and nibbles, so I'll be try to be concise and let's make this session interactive. We're not too many. Half of the half of the room knows about Vima, and half maybe does not. So please prepare your questions. So, short agenda. I want to run through what we do. What is the company? doing, then run through also a little bit about AI science from a science scientific perspective, behavioral science, and also introduce some use cases that, that we do. So the talk is going to be less scientific than what you've seen so far. It's more to give you this entrepreneurial perspective, a twist a, a little bit on how to productify the research that has been done in this field. So Vima is a spin-off of the EDAP Research Institute in, Mart in Martigny. We are basically located not too far away from, Lo from Lausanne. We leverage 10 plus years of academic research, know-how, network from the EDAP, from the University of Lausanne and from EPFL as, 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 as well. The research partners we're working with leverage a lot, of, a lot of academic knowledge and it's one of the most quoted team in behavioral science. We're also financed by leading Swiss investors and in InnoSuisse for those who know the Swiss Innovation a Agency. What do we do more specifically? So Vima has developed the first and most the first and most advanced method that can automatically appraise people's traits and behaviors from a video feed in real time. So how do we do this? Now you've come more familiar to the concept of a video CV. So basically, what we what we do is we send you a link. You're getting redirected to our web-based recording module. You record a short video presentation of yourself between one and three minutes. So you can say, hey, I'm Philip. I, I did my PhD at EPFL. I like skiing, things like, things like, things like that. The system in the back end will actually analyze your, the, the, well, analyze your speech, will look at your facial micro expressions, and will also look at your body language. And each trait and its scale behavior is giving an assessment score. And then, because our ultimate user is the end user, you are giving a feedback, which is given primarily to the employer or the, or the, or the person who is applying, but also depending on the use case to the, to the company. What are we evaluating? What do we understand now? So working with, with our research partners at University of, Lo of Lausanne, sitting on the, in the first row, we bucket these skills into three. So we have social skills, professional skills, how you convey a message, and then personality traits. These can be bundled in such a way that you can refer with the big five that have been mentioned earlier. And we can say, how well do you fare with respect to a norm group? So if you see the distribution functions, at the bottom of, of, of the slide, where do you stand with respect to others? So what do we claim here? We basically wanted to develop a tool that's a trusted, that gives you a precise feedback and, have that, and that has minimum bias to basically understand your unique personality profile. So we're not saying that you are good or bad with respect to social skills or professional skills. We're just saying, this is who you are. And this is how, actually, how you can actually thrive and, and improve. So we claim that the precision that we have is equivalent to 24 psychology experts rating a video. The key objectives from a company perspective, so really if we look at what the companies are trying to do is we're trying to help the companies reduce the risk of bad hires because we know that bad hires are actually quite costly to a company, about one to 1.5 yearly annual salary. We're trying to, re to decrease the human bias in the process because we know that human interviews are heavily biased, improve diversity and, in and inclusion, reduce the time to fulfillment, which means when you have selected a candidate, actually onboard that person, increase employee re retention, meaning if you can help employees know more about themselves in, an, in a trusted, precise, and unbiased way, they will like to also step up and actually do more things. We would like to provide feedback to employees. This has been mentioned in the talk earl earlier and you've all done the exercise. You can sometimes wait for a long time to get a feedback if you're lucky to get one. Our core message is everybody who will record a video will get instant feedback. Evaluate the soft skills in a time efficient manner. This is something that is not being done at the moment. You're, it's only being done in an interview, but sometimes considering the number of applications that firms get, it's almost impossible to get every person through an, in, through an interview, and then provide the fair recruitment process to people that go through this whole procedure. So from a, from a science perspective, so from a high level 
vision, what Vima does is trying to blend, to bridge two things. The human science aspect, where you're actually trying to understand the behavior, with social sciences, where you, with the, with the uh, uh, computer science, where you capture the behavior. So that's the, that's the computer here, speech, pro speech processing, and computer vision. And using AI and machine learning, you blend, the, you blend these two worlds. Why can we do it at the moment? Because we, as I said before, we have very high-end video smartphones in our pockets, and you can perform cloud computing, and you can use algorithms thanks to the availability of high bandwidth internet and high-speed computers. So but this is what we call ubiquitous computing. You can perform computing everywhere you are around the planet at any time of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the day. What does Vima do also to do a calibration of its own algorithms? So the ground truth has, has been said is social perception. What does it mean ground truth for us? So what we did is we took 10,000 videos of 10,000 different people in different regions of the world. And we ask annotators that have been carefully selected by Vima to go through each video and actually give an evaluation of those skills that you've seen earlier. And then these are used to actually do the calibration of the model so that we can give a recommendation. We're not replacing humans. That's really a key message that I want to say. We're not trying to replace women, uh, um, humans. We're really, I'm sorry about that. We're trying to give people more information so that they actually do a better job. The thing that we're not trying to do is replace them because the one thing that people have is judgment. That's the thing that we cannot replace. But if you give them more information, they will make a more educated and a better decision process. Another way to see what we actually do is we know that humans are really good at building good and rapid first, impre first impressions. So when someone walks into, wants, walks into a room, I will look at how the person is. So that's computer vision. I will also listen to what the person says and how the person speaks and chats and, dis and discusses. That's Speech, pro speech processing, and then my brain will take all these cues, take all these messages, and I will form first impressions. And we use our artificial, our artificial intelligence to automate this in real, in real time. For, for the tech savvy people here, from a speech processing perspective, we extract about 5,000 different points on video frames per second, so anything to frequency, to you know how does the spectrogram look, look like from a speech processing, you know, the number of words you use per second, how's the pitch, things like that. From a computer vision perspective, what we actually do is you input an image, the computer will then reconstruct it, will we'll then analyze the facial action units on your face and things like that, but on, also on your joints, your, mo your movement, and will then reconstruct what you, what you can actually have at the beginning. So this is actually a research that has been done in the States that is very similar to what we, to what, to what we do, but that's the extent and the precision that we can achieve in real time using 30 frames per second. So if I have a scheme now, basically what we do internally, we have, you know, a v we have a video feed. With the, uh, with the audio feed, we extract visual cues and audio cues from every frame that you have. So if, we, if you run a movie about 30 to 60 frames per second, this is what we do on every frame. So we extract audio information and video information. From the video, from the video perspective, we use an encoder that transforms the input data into low dimensional features. The regressor is basically trying to reconstruct that image. And the fusion is basically where we fuse the audio modality with the video to then predict these skills and traits that you see on the right. So the unique Salt Lake proposition of Vima are multiple. First of all, we know that people tend, depending on their personalities, they will have different um, emotional reactions. They will, they will express these emotional reactions in a different way. What we're able to do is to do a calibration of these emotional reactions based on person personality. Easy example, extroverts tend to move their hands and have a high pitch and also open their eyes and smile a lot more than introverts who will tend to be, you know, don't move their, they won't move their arms so much and be very shy and things like that. However, the way they have to express emotions, the intensity is going to be different, but it doesn't mean that one person is going to be less happy than the other person. 
They just have different ways of expressing it. And we can actually sense this. The cultural differences also, we know that that, that is a major influence on how people express, how they, how, how they move, how they uh, talk. This is, can also be fac factored in. The fact that we can use, that we can, that we can continuously learn over time and in different industries using transfer learning, we can improve the precision of our, of our, of our system. Because that's the thing that I didn't mention. We're active in HR, that's the name of the track, but we're also active in automotive and fintech and market, and market research. And we can use that knowledge to increase the efficacy of our system. We're also multimodal, which means we do not only focus on face, but we, but we focus also on voice, speech tonality, speech, pro speech processing, full body movement. We can consider also the context, you know, what clothes you're wearing. Are you in a dark room? Are you on stage? In which, in which, in which environment are you actually evolving? All these types of information, we can factor that them in to give a more precise recommendation about the person. And we also believe not in garbage in, garbage out, but in quality in, quality out. The data that we use, we put a lot of scrutiny on it because that's actually the core of our technology. For the people that are actually active in HR here, how do we fare in comparison to other types of technology? So it's been mentioned before, psychometric questionnaire. They take some time to do. It's about self-reflection, so it can be you know, bias, the amount of knowledge that, that you know about yourself is fairly limited. And the accuracy is fairly, is fairly low and it's manual, it's a bit static. So we consider these for, as outdated. Interviews give a lot of information about someone. We don't say that, you know, the Vima system will help you to get to know someone better than if you would spend three hours getting to know the person, the family interests, you know, things like, things like that but it can help you achieve a very good level of, of accuracy only with a video of one to three minutes. However, interviews, as we all know, can sometimes be biased. If the person hasn't slept in front of you, the interviewer doesn't like you, for whatever reason, you have no chance to move forward. So we're trying to minimize bias to actually let you shine through the things that you're good at, your soft skills. And it's scalable, automated, and it learns continuously over time. One thing that we have to consider as well is that it works at any time of the day. You know, we've been asked, does it work? Is it, is it, is it actually, does it replicate the results? That's something that, we, that a machine will do, not necessarily a human. Behavioral science, and here I'm taking risks because the people in the room know a lot more about what I can do, so I'll, please, be, please be kind. But these are the questions that we're asked all the time. You know, why, why, why do you actually focus on personality? Because we, all, we always or we often hear the term emotion AI. Yes, these two things are linked, but they're different. Emotion is something that is a bit fleeting. You know, you will be happy. You might be happy for five min minutes, but it doesn't necessarily define you over the long run. However, personality traits are stable over time. It doesn't mean that they will not change, but the time they, it takes for them to change is longer. And this will actually, your personality will influence who you are, how you express your emotions. And they're tightly linked to job performance, driving attitude, spending attitude, and things like, and things like that. There are some words also that you might have used in this, that you might have heard in this context. What's a mood? A mood is actually something that's longer than an emotion, but it's more diffuse and it's not necessarily linked to one specific event that, you've might have, that you might have experienced. A skill, a word that we can link to a skill is more an ability to actually do, to actually do something. And it can be refined and you can learn more the more you, pra the more you practice it. So considering all these things, you know, how can you measure emotions? How can you measure moods, personality, and skills? Well, research has shown that people behave in a systematic way and that you can actually extract some cues that will actually make, that, that will give you sufficient information to infer specific things about their behaviors. So we know that verbal is a, is a good, is a, is, you know, it's a fairly good source of information, but nonverbal messages that messages are actually are a trove of information and a, even if you have short interactions with people with limited time you can extract so much information from the interactions that you have with them that you can have good inferences and good predictions about 
their behaviors and therefore their, persona their personalities. We know that you form, the first impressions that you form about someone happens on the scale of 0.5 seconds. So in less, than, in less than a second, you form good solid first impressions about people with limited amount of information. So the, ta the, the challenge that, that we're actually facing is, is you know, we, we're trying to elicit good quality of expressions that people will, will, will have. So it's standardizing the way they will express their behavior and also capturing that behavior. So because before I said, you know, we have smartphones, you record videos using high-end camera and high-end microphones, you can extract a lot of information from these short video clips and you can infer very good things about the personalities and skills of people. So perhaps the most interesting part here is like, how do we use it in a, on a day-to-day -day basis? It's a subject that you read almost on a weekly, on, on a weekly um, um, manner in the newspapers. I'll present you four. First of all, in HR, I differentiate recruitment and organizational de development. Here, first use case is the pre-screening of, can of candidates. I'll give you an example. GE receives 2 million applications per year. They have absolute, there's no way for them to sift through all the applications, so they need to have an automated tool to help them go through these applications. So now we know that about 60 to 70% of all CVs are already scanned by computers. However, these CVs are scanned only looking at hard skills. What about soft skills? We know that soft skills are the number one long-term success fa factors of people within the company. So why don't we try to analyze them and evaluate them at an early stage of the recruitment process? So this is typically what we do here. When you have, and that's just like we, we did a, a pro rata of what we actually had on a real case scenario. If we, we took a thousand candidates, run them through our system, and we compare with what the company did, we shortlisted a hundred people, and this was actually the accuracy is 90%. So it means that we were able to pick out 90% of the good performers that they had identified after one year working at the company. The hired people, this was, again, we were able, only looking at the short listing there, we were able with 70% of accuracy to detect who were the people who were hired down the, down, down the recruitment process. So on the right-hand side, this is actually the experience that you would have using a dashboard. As an employer, you would see you know, the profile ALD, who was the person that recorded, and it's ranked according to our algorithm, you know, how well should, how well, or wh who are the people that you should interview first? We don't put the name, we don't put any relevant in information for one simple case. We don't want bias to creep in at this moment of the recruitment process. Of course, it's linked to, a, to your application tracking system. So if you want to schedule an interview, things like that, this is fine, but you don't know who that person is yet. And we give scores with respect to a norm group, you know, how, how, how good is this person in social skills, pro professional skills, and, what, and whatnot. So we give more information for you to understand why we rank them in such a way. So using machine learning te te techniques as well and production functions, we're able to, you know, play around with these, da with these da data points and select the bottom ones the top 30% the top for, for example, and actually give you more insights about who, are, who is the pool of candidate? Are there good people? How well do they fare? We can extract perhaps the social skills or, or extract the skills that's of, the, of the pool of candidates that have applied for a specific job. Second use case, team effectiveness. That's a huge thing and it came from a client of ours that said, you know, we are dealing with maybe 300, 400 teams it's very difficult for us to understand what makes a good team, what makes a bad team. So interestingly, what we're trying to do now is we're looking at all of these teams and looking at the personalities and the skills of people present in those teams. Looking at combining research and also data from the client, we can, we can say, hey, we can actually see that you know, these, these people work well together Therefore, there's a green line. But if you see a red line, we can actually that there's some tension and negative tension between these between these people. What we can do is, we, if we look at all all of the, all of the teams and evaluate each member of the team at different times, you know, after after at time zero, then after three months, and after six months, then after a year or something, 
we can see how well the dynamics between each team member is actually playing and help them achieve a better working team. What we're trying to do is then also suggest who could work better with other people. This doesn't mean that we're gonna replace you because you're bad at something you do and know. It just means that the combination of people and personalities can have a better outcome on the team performance. So we're not acting against you to replace you. We're just putting people in the place where they belong, where they can thrive. A third use case also is to show the evolution of diversity. So you can see here that squares re re represent male employees and rounds represent female employees. That's also based on real case data. If we reduce all these functions and we use the, the, a, t a technique called a Tisney, te Tisney technique is basically reducing all the 27 dim dim dimensions that we had with the skills and traits and we try to look at only one or two, this is how well they fare. The red ones indicate that people are very close to one another using the professional skills. The blue ones mean that they're very far apart from each other. And if we can look at where females stand and where males stand, it will give you an, in, an indication of, you know, am I doing enough for people perhaps at a certain level of, ma of management? Could I actually help them do a better job? Can I push them in a certain direction? Where do they stand and whatnot. And this is, a, this is an issue that's very big in the States that we're also trying to bring in here with our clients. Another use case is talent programs. That's more organizational develop, development. Today, companies have almost no tool, no available tool to measure the impact of, of modules that they give to their employees inter, internally. Companies on average spend 350 billion per year to train their employees at a global scale. However, interestingly and paradoxically, they have no way to measure the impact. Is the money you're spending for your employees worth the buck? Well, with this tool, what we plan to do, and we're applying it now, for example, with, S with SBB, is to say, if I pick people for my talent programs, and if I if they go through my system after you know, three months, six months, a year or more, will the training module and will, the, will the, the lessons that they have learned made a difference on their personalities, on their skills? Yes or, or no. We're trying to you know, put to objectify what before was completely subjective, subjective, subjective. So we can actually use them and you see that the dashboards are fairly similar. Where do they stand? Where is the group? Has the group evolved in the right way? Is P are people getting better thanks to these training modules? Can I also point specific training modules to people depending on their persona on their personalities? We've we've all had that in our, in our in our life as well. You know, I don't want to take that training because I'm good at whatever public speaking or what or, or whatnot, but I'm very bad at at accounting. Can I, can I pick this? Can a machine tell me that I should improve on, you know, on these specific things? So you can ask, I actually, actually see that as a matter of consequence, if you are working for your employees, you will actually improve the employee re retention because they will also be more satisfied with the training modules that they get. You create more diverse and more motivated teams that will perform better. And you will actually give the opportunity to your workforce to improve themselves be, to improve itself because you've given them the you've given your employees the opportunity to evaluate themselves in a in a fair objective manner that's the end of my talk if you if you want to ask questions happy to answer thank you for your attention <laughs>